fun. Cassie Pennings is our third uh, speaker. She's a certified nursing assistant from Littleton, Colorado. She's a member of Communication Workers of America Local 7799. Ms. Pennings, thanks for joining us too. Good morning, Chairman Brown and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Cassie Pennings and I'm a registered nurse and a proud member of CWA Local 7799. I remember the courage it took to believe in myself enough to apply to nursing school. For me, nursing isn't just a career path, it's an identity. It's who I've always been, it's coming home. As I entered the field of nursing amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, veteran nurses apologized to me on behalf of the state of the profession and assured me it wasn't always like this. One of the worst shifts of experience occurred when I had been a nurse for just 11 weeks. As a part of the new grad program, new, we are promised to be paired with a nurse mentor who will stay elbow to elbow with us for at least the first 12 weeks. But on this shift, my mentor was preoccupied with multiple emergencies, leaving me to take care of my five patients alone, each of whom required high levels of care. I remember feeling like I couldn't be physically in enough places at once. And then I received an ICU admission. I was running to one patient's room, checking one task off the list and running back to an, attend to another one of my six patients. By the time I was able to prioritize spending more than a few minutes with my new admit, who was elderly, confused and incontinent, I realized he had been laying in his own urine with a fresh spinal inc incision. Doing the bare minimum was all I could manage under the circumstances afforded to me, doing profits over patients. This was just under three months into my nursing career. In describing the shift to my manager, I expressed, it was not safe for the patients, it was not safe for my license, never again. Nonetheless, patient ratios continue to increase. As the injury the pandemic has left on the field of nursing persists, the responsibility is continue placed upon the worker. While walking an average of six miles every shift, I still struggled with crippling feelings of guilt when the limitations of staffing made it impossible for me to deliver the basic care these human beings deserved. I learned this was moral distress, a precursor to burnout, yet we continue to ask why the nursing shortage persists. Despite being one of the most profitable healthcare systems in the nation, my formal in, former employer responded to cries for help from the front lines with breakfast burritos and free water bottles. It is imperative that Congress pass Chairman Brown's bill to mandate safe staffing ratios. Historically resilient, I found myself in survival mode. It took everything I had to keep my space clean exercise, and feed myself. Rather than advocating for my fellow healthcare workers and patients in forums like this, I had to turn down opportunities because the healthcare system had successfully oppressed me, a labor activist. The hospital's greed and neglect forced me to leave this summer, but that same greed made it almost impossible to leave. Leaving my job felt like exiting an abusive relationship. The only way to get a job as a new nurse in a hospital is to enter a new nurse residency program and sign a financial contract with no sign-on bonus. As a result of my choice to remove myself from this situation, I am now indebted $7,500 to the hospital because of a training repayment agreement plan, ironically, TRAP for short. That's two months of my salary. That's more than six months rent. Suffice it to say, we certainly did not receive $7,500 worth of benefits through the program. Hospitals have demonstrated that they would rather trap their employees with the threat of debt than incentivize them to stay. Upon resignation, I received an email informing me that there would be money withheld from my remaining paychecks to help cover the debt, making it even more impossible for some nurses to be able to, to afford to leave. Any uncollected debt would be turned into collections. This email was vague, not detailing any sort of schedule or amount for these withholdings. My heart dropped as I received the following paycheck and recognized half of it was missing. 
As you consider policy moving forward, I ask you to remember my patients. Think of your loved ones and prioritize empowering and protecting the people at the bedside with them by banning abusive practices like traps. Thank you.